When searching for games in Company Vera's 2 Auto Match, you are entitled to up to four vetoes when playing 1v1. Many of us don't know which maps we should actually veto, though. Maybe we think maybe we shouldn't veto any, maybe we should try to veto the ones we like the least. Um, I'm going to cover today statistically which maps are the worst for each faction. I'm using data taken from coh2stats.com. Thank you so much for providing this amazing information. Links to this info are provided in the video description. First of all, let's take a look at the win rates for each faction. CH2 Stats provides us with win rates for the general player base as a whole, and also for top 200 players only. Because this video is oriented towards general average players, I want to look at the stats for the general player base. Me, the game team is overall really well balanced. There is a little bit of a discrepancy favoring the Western Front allies, that being the Brits and the US forces. Um, but I think in general, everything's pretty close to 50%, and I'm, I'm quite happy where the game is balance-wise right now. You should keep in mind that, for example, the Brits are quite good in the general population, but they actually have the worst win rate in the top 200 population. So it's really hard to balance a faction for both new players and for pro players. Also, keep in mind that even chess has a 55% win rate for whites, so you're not going to balance any game perfectly. Now let's jump into the data-driven specifics of which map should be vetoed for each faction. First of all, a disclaimer here, you should take this with a big grain of salt. There might be some maps that your particular playstyle does very well or very poorly on, and maybe you should consider vetoing those or not vetoing those, or maybe they're just maps that you need to practice on, and so you should get more playtime on, on those particular maps. So yeah, be careful here. This is not orthodox doctrine, this is just general recommendations. We're going to start off with Wehrmacht. Their average spread over all maps in all games is minus 1.8%, which means they have a slightly negative win rate. Then, looking at the worst maps for Wehrmacht, by far the worst one is Crossroads, followed by Bokage and Crossroads Winter. There are a few that are tied for fourth worst, um, but Ploiesti is uh, slightly worse than the other contenders. So again, Crossroads is the worst, then Bokage, Crossroads Winter, and Ploiesti. Moving on to OKW now, they have a slightly negative spread again of minus 1.6, similar to that of Wehrmacht. The worst maps for OKW are in order Crossing the Woods, Bokage, Longris, and then Crossroads. All these are pretty similarly bad for OKW. Moving on to Soviets, who are actually extremely well balanced. They only have a slightly higher than 50% win rate, uh, with a positive spread of 0.4. By far the worst map for Soviets is Mill Road, followed by Vilshenka, Longris, and then Bayou. Looking at US forces, they have a positive spread of plus 2.9%. They actually have a positive win rate on every single map, which is kind of cool, um, but there are still some maps that are worse than others relatively. So the first one is Crossroads. This is by far the US's worst map. Then we have Mill Road, Nexus, and Bayou, which are all pretty similar. Lastly, we have British forces who have the highest positive spread of plus 3%. They also have no maps that they have a negative win rate on, uh, but again, they do have some maps that are less good than others, uh, namely Mill Road, followed by Haloniferma, Crossroads Winter, and Longress. I hope this video is useful for you guys when you're trying to create your veto strategy. Again, I don't necessarily recommend vetoing all four of these maps for each faction. Find the maps that you like more, you like less, and use this as a general population level guide as to which maps are tougher for each faction. And again, huge shout out to coh2stats.com for providing all this amazing data without which I could not have made this video.